Today on Tuesdays. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Today we're going to talk dental care. What, what, what's dental care? What does that mean when you talk about dental? What? Brush our teeth. Brush our teeth. I like that. Thank you for jumping in with your answer. Okay. We're going to go right in. Your first question. First, first question right off the bat. Is dental care important? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I like that. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Very much important. I'm going to use my cheat sheet because I did some little bit of research just to make sure I'm informing you guys. And please, please help me if you know when you visited the dentist, any information as well. Okay? Okay. And at home, any of you viewers chime in as well okay so we just informed us that dental care is important so why is it important for good dental hygiene dental hygiene overall has problems that give you what yes ken wow that is a lot to say if you don't brush your teeth it might make you sick and give extra germs also something called cavities, gum disease, and ability to eat or even speak improperly. If your teeth hurt so bad, you might or that tooth. And I'll be honest, I recently experienced I was a little nervous to visit my dentist. Shame on me. And they were absolutely safe in reassuring me, but my fears got the best of me again. So I spoke differently. So yes, pain and it can also give you bad breath. But nobody knew because I was wearing shields and face masks. So yay for me. Right? <laughs> Hi, Felipe. Good morning to you. All right. Okay. So what about dental problems and health issues? Can I urge you mention something about your body, your dental decay, gum disease? It can lead to serious health problems. Tell me about that. Might get germs that might leave part of your body make you sick. Okay, get you sick. It could be. And you know what? Overall, you just don't feel like smiling. That's not good. Not good at all. So we want to brush our teeth. So when that next question, in brushing our teeth, how many times a day do we think we should brush our teeth? Every day. Every day. Good answer, Matt. Like it. What else? How many times? Zero, one, two, three, what? Someone, talk to me. How many times, Vicki? How many times, Shannon? Look at my fingers. How many? Three. Yes, yes. Could you brush your teeth too much? No. You know what? Could you brush your teeth too hard? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're so smart. You can. A little too hard. You might bleed, or it just might just, your gums might hurt, really? cause it to bleed. That's brilliant. With that being said, we have a toothbrush here. We call it manual toothbrush. Lots of different colors and different sizes, and as well as, I think they call it textures, where it's right. soft, medium, or hard bristles. Right. And some have different sections or where, you know, you can brush your tongue, which is important because mm -hmm. that gets rid of all that yucky um, mm -hmm. pockets of bad breath. And especially when you just take out your tongue and go, mm, you want people to not see any other color but a nice pretty pink. And then um, where is, where's our toothbrushes? Do we have them on our picture? I wanted to show up because when I was a little girl, no, no problem. When I was a little girl, I had these cute fun toothbrushes. And then when I came to camp and visited some friends, they made fun of me because they had big girl toothbrushes. But I liked my little girl toothbrushes. 
So I graduated to a non-manual toothbrush and it has batteries and it wow. became, I became lazy. So it makes this little noise. So ready? I'm going to. You got one of those? You're a little lazy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got both. So when you go camping, visiting, you got this one. And when you're at home, you got your fun, lazy one. Yes. I like it. I can walk around, watch KTLA. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. So do you brush your teeth before breakfast or after? Before breakfast. You do? What, Ken? After and after, before you go to bed and after dinner, too. Okay. Three so two times. times. Right, because you're here at L1. I'll be honest. I, I also mm -hmm. two times. Yeah. Or depending if I go out and have a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that wine breath. Woo. Okay. So, right. So that being said, you got your variations of toothbrushes. And I hear Elwin, Elwin, our friends and staff had said, Carrie, let's get some for our clients. What do you think about that? <laughs> Are you guys on board with that? Yeah. And do you know, do you guys know what? You should probably change out your toothbrushes. Cindy, have you changed out? Cindy, yeah. hi. Have you changed out your toothbrush this year? Yeah. You did? Smart girl. Vicki, how about you? Because I was a dentist. Yep, you get them at the dentist when you visit. Um, you should change out your toothbrush. They say two times a year, if not more. And if you're feeling under the weather, they actually say when you're not feeling well, toss the toothbrush, toss the toothbrush before and after you're not feeling well. Because basically you're just spreading around the yucky germs. Right? Felipe, you look bored with me. <laughs> See you. Hi, honey. Okay, so yes, Keith, do you brush your teeth? Yeah. In the morning or night? Both. Good job. Okay. Keith, do you want to help me pass out the toothbrushes? I love them. Thank you so much for your time. So you go ahead and you just, you know, Carmen, thank you, help me. And then that's that. And you know what? Does anyone know what this is? Each one of your friends, a, water 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 thing. a water thing, yep, and or a water pick. So, what this is, I do in the morning. I get up in the morning and I just have that little extra film going on between my teeth. Yep, Tim wants one, he's raising his hand. Thank you so much. I'm hearing manners, and I like that. So, this water pick is in place of you want one too, Felipe? Maybe we'll get you one. Or you're going to have to come in and get one yourself, buddy. We'll save one for you. So this water pick takes in place of toothpicks or dual. You're at home. Yes. If you're at home, you just kind of gently rub it by your gums and the upper and lower between your mouth. I really like it. I actually put in this is the down below is a pocket. And you, it's a charger. You plug it in the wall. This, to me, is one of my better favorite products. Maria, do you floss your teeth? Yeah? I do, too. So in here, I place hydro peroxide and a little bit of mouthwash. And I found that hydro peroxide is a very good solution for any source or around my teeth or in my mouth. So portions of hydro peroxide and mouthwash, which is right here, which is my fabulous, um, you know, any product really, but um, strengthens teeth, also gets away of all that, uh, cleans up your mouth, freshens your breath, can't go wrong with that, assists with your cavities, but I'm a huge fan of hydro peroxide on almost anything, on uh, grass stains when you're doing laundry. But anyways, your teeth. Throw that in there. Turn this on. This also makes a noise. I don't have water in here. I hope maybe I do. Yep, maybe I do. I'm not going to do that yet. So <laughs> anyways, but it does make a noise also. Graze it around your gum lines, in between your teeth. Any kind of dental care that might be going on there. Um, again, you could do warm water if you're sensitive, hot and cold. But I do a um, big fan of this when you're at home. Even if you're bored, this is a good plan. I would say it's about... $40 or so. Again, what's my favorite shopping center, guys? Where, Where do I like, like to shop? shop? Party. 
Rite Aid, okay. I'm not oh, against yeah. Rite Aid. I like yeah. it. I also enjoy Amazon. Oh, if I'm Amazon. staying home, oh, it's really? real quick. The gentleman delivers to my door no later than three days. We kind of have a relationship. I don't know if he knows it. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, I give him water oh, and iced tea. What? Oh, you do that too? You for helping me. Okay, so water bit. Here's other dental care. This is something called yes. You know, these are water picks. They're little sticks. Let me open this up. This is a fresh package. I bought it at Rite Aid actually. Thank you very much, Matthew. Right. If you floss regularly, your dentist is aware of it. I don't know if you know this. Your dentist is aware that you will floss. This now your state Herman enjoys a good corner. Oh, I do now. You do too. Yeah. Some little bristles. You can kind of do that too. But you really do have to be a little extra careful. You don't want to be any poking or any of that stuff. And you don't want to lay it around. Where do you want to throw this away? In the trash. Yes, you do. So pump. But I'm going to actually do exactly what I said not to do, but I'll put it right there. Here's another one. I'm going to open this up. It's a brand new one. Stole it from the other half. The family's going to ask where these are this morning, and I'm going to say I took it to class. Right, Felipe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right here's another package. You'll see there's different types to do this. So again, another gentle pick. Be extra careful. Vicky's showing me how to do it. Yep. Here's one, but you, I've been instructed that this can be a little dangerous to your teeth, a little hard on your teeth. You place it in your tooth and you place it down your tooth, in your tooth and down your tooth. Right, Matthew and Nira? In your tooth, down your tooth. Right, Maria? In and down, gently. But what occurs as you're pulling in and down, you might be loosening a root. Okay, so this may not be the best one, but if you're in the car, you know, it works for me. If you're in your office or if you're here at Elwin and you just kind of got a little lunch in there, it works for me. Setting that down there, there you go. Good old fashioned, this is what the dentist says to use. What is this? Floss. It is floss. floss. Good old fashioned floss. floss. I got some at home. You do. This is actually, he says, the number one product to use. It's floss tape, floss string, whatever you want to call it. Pulls right off, cap it right back up, wrap it around your finger, and you're going like this. Place it in and release, pull it straight out. Exactly. You're not doing this up and down action, loosening roots or pulling on your gums. Up, slide it out. How do you do it? Up, slide it out. Okay, guys? Ken, how's it go? Up. Up. And down. Up and out. Out. Right. Up and out. Okay? Since I didn't put it in my mouth, I'm going to leave it right here. Good to go. Okay, thank you, guys. Correct. Flossing and brushing in order. Ready for this? The best order. What do you guys think? Do you floss first or brush first? Talk to me. What do you guys think? Brush. You thinking brush first? What else? Brush I'm gonna look. your floss first. You brush your teeth first, right. so you're loosening up everything. All that Captain Crunch cereal you ate in the morning, <laughs> all that chicken you ate at dinner, mm. all that turkey sandwich, right, Matt? You had at lunch, <laughs> right, Vicki? Mm. The strawberries <laughs> and all those seeds you might have had at lunch. You want to brush your teeth first, loosen it up. Then you want to floss. And what do you want to do? Place up and out. Say it with me, guys, everybody. Up and out. There you go. I like it. Thanks for helping me. Ah, it's stuck to my finger. Okay. And again, it's whatever floss you want to use, but really be extra careful on your teeth. Your teeth are fragile. They really are. They really are. So then your teeth to use. There's top toothpaste. Do you guys know that there's so much toothpaste out there? There's so many brands and flavors. It's like soda pop. You've got Pepsi, you've got Coke, you've got Shasta, you've got the Walmart brand.
There's so many different brands out there. You have lots of choices with toothpaste. This one happened to be the one at the store that I grabbed. I actually enjoy using it because it's Procter & Gamble. It's my family's. <laughs> I'm a big fan of P&G. Little plug, not going <laughs> to. I've got some stock in it. We all have our own little favorites, but little plug. So Crest, Procter & Gamble, use it, get it. Crest works for us. It's a simple, clean product. There's lots of different brands in it. This is a gel form. They have a paste. They have a whitening. There's tons. So pick the toothpaste you enjoy to use. Every store has their favorite and different brands. Shannon, what toothpaste do you use? You think you use the same one? Yes, cha-ching. The word cha-ching comes to mind. All right. Ken, what about you? What flavor do you use of toothpaste? Fresh. Yes. Fresh. Fresh. Anyone else? Me too. You do? Yes. That's fantastic. Cindy, what about you? What kind of toothpaste do you use? Aim. Aim. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Darn it. I like that you know your brand, though. That tells me that you're using toothpaste. Matthew, what about you? Do you remember? Oh, uh, I do no. You can't remember? Oh, no. Darn it. But do you use it? Yes. Does it taste good? No. <laughs> you know what? I'll be honest. Do we swallow toothpaste? No. 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 It is okay for girls to be spitting out your toothpaste. Yucky. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Gently place an, a decent amount on your toothbrush. Place it in your teeth. And just... Gently and respectfully. You don't want to put it all over the mirror. You don't want to spit all over the nozzle. Don't make a mess. Nobody wants to clean that. Right back in the sink. Hey, do we waste water? Do we leave that water running the whole time we're brushing our teeth? No, we don't leave your water running, right, Felipe? Yeah. Not at all. Okay, the peanut gallery is over here cracking up. I know what you're laughing at. Okay. So Colgate, Crest, and there's actually a toothpaste that has some sensitivity. If you have sensitivity with your teeth, let somebody know. That means you need to visit your dentist in between your normal six-month visit, okay? If there's sensitivity to your soda pop, sensitivity to your coffee, you're going to want to report that to your family, your loved ones, and say, hey, this side of my mouth hurts, this side of my mouth hurts. Okay? <laughs> Don't wait. Don't wait too long. Okay. And lots of different brands out there. What else do I need to share? Hey, did I miss something? What's this? Mouthwash. Oh, yes. Oh, Tim, do you use mouthwash? You do? Do we swallow this? Yeah. No. You just do a little cap full, maybe a half cap. Read the directions on the back. If not, have someone read it to you. I'm not I'm not really really savvy at it because remember if I told you, I put it right here in my little pick and right here at the bottom, my hydrogen peroxide and my mouthwash. So I'm kind of two in one girl. It works for me. Just rinse it out. But you put a little cap full in here, shake it around. Mm -hmm. Do a little humming. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hum for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, blah. Do we spit in the mirror? No. Do we spit all over the handles? No. In the sink, Shannon. Good girl. In the sink. And you place that right back underneath. Cap it back up nice and snug. Nobody wants the cap to fall off and all over the sink. Right, Mark, at home? <laughs> Cap it up. Cap it up. Oh, oh, I have another pet peeve. Let me explain something to you, people. Okay, go. Yeah, thanks, Matt. When we do toothpaste, do we squeeze from the bottom or from the middle? The bottom. Huh? The bottom. Yes. Why do we do that? Why is it in the middle? So we're not getting the end. Do we want to be wasteful? No. Waste not, want not. Do we want raises? Yes. 
Don't waste, people. Don't waste. So again, and do we leave the cap off? No. Mark, please no. put the cap back on it. <laughs> Hear me, watch me. Cap. <laughs> Look at all the different tape, uh, the different toothpaste. Oh, Tom's is amazing. Absolutely. And if you can't put the cap back on, there's pop caps. It's just as easy. They open up, pop back on. It's fun. And you can stand them up. Well, not this one because it doesn't work. But Tom's, I think you can get them almost anywhere at the organic stores and as well as at Trader Joe's, I think. Um, lots of different brands. Sorry, PG. Okay. Um, but um, Colgate, uh, Crest, just awesome toothbrushes um, or toothpaste, lots of different flavors for lots of different reasons for your oral mouth dental care. I kind of feel like we went over everything. Let me look. Ooh, here we go. The average person goes to the dentist as often every six months in the last few years, once a year. Once a year. I'm telling you, those dentists, they're not out there just to get your money. They're out there to make sure that your, your mouth is clean and you have good care. Because if you're sore, and not feeling well, and you're letting it go too long, you can get headaches, you can get, um, um, what else, uh, um, uh, infections, and um, like, you know when you get an owie in your on your finger, and you put a Band-Aid on it? You can't do that with your mouth. So the doctor can do that. The doctor can take care of you. Yes? I'm going to the dance and get Oh, okay. That means we need to see extra care. So yeah. So use your toothbrushes. Oh, okay. Use your toothbrushes that the staff passed out. Read the directions on the back. See how it works. Circle motions. Gently up and down. Not too hard. Get the front and the back. Not just the front. Just because we see your beautiful smile doesn't mean that's the only one you want to clean. Yeah. And brush your tongue. Absolutely gentle, gentle everywhere, okay? And your tongue. And your tongue, yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, yeah, use these. Save them if you want for vacations. We're starting to take uh, little road trips and vacations and visit friends and family. Maybe save this one to do that with. So, I appreciate that. If there's anything I'm missing, let me know. But otherwise, I really appreciate your guys' uh, patience and care and listening to my tried and true today but my my favorite really is my lazy electric toothbrush and my water pick okay so those are my tried and true check it out on amazon and uh yeah tried and true yes matthew questions i got i got you no what are you getting you 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 have to do that one too um, yes, uh, family enjoys the automatic toothbrushes okay. and water picks. Yeah, family yeah. enjoys those. Yeah. But on vacations, we take we take our, our portable manual ones. Yeah. Yep, circular motion. Don't forget to um, yeah. uh, brush your And again, what's the floss? Up and out. Yeah, good message. Good. All right, you guys. Thank you for your time. Happy Tuesday. Can we say to Carrie Yay. 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 And the two space from the bottom of the two. Step on. Step on. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And Felipe, we'll save you one, okay? Okay. Open. Okay. Alright. Yes. Thank you so much. We're good. Perfecto. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Morning, everybody. Morning. So, hello, everybody. It's me again, Jeremy. I'm going to give you guys another geography lesson. This time, we're going to go to Florida. Yeah. Yes. By show of hands, everybody in this room, who's been to Florida? Jeremy, on it. All right. It seems like a handful of people. So, anybody who's watching at home, it seems like there have been some people who have been to Florida before. And we're going to talk about Florida, also known as the Sunshine State. Yes. So those of you who don't know, this is the state where it is the most tropical in our in our country, and it is one of the shiniest places. So let's talk about that. So first of all, where's Florida? So if we move on to the next slide. So guys, on the map here, Florida is the southeastern part of the United States, this little peninsula here, Florida. So Florida is bordered by Georgia and Alabama to the north, only two states. And then obviously you got the little Caribbean islands over here, the US Virgin Islands. Well, it's not on the map, but the US Virgin Islands would be right over here. The Caribbean islands would be down here, but that's a whole separate issue. So let's talk about a brief history of Florida. So moving on to the next slide. So. For those of you who don't know, Florida was this landmass right here that was originally inhabited by people groups that inhabited mostly right down here and right about here. And some had inhabited these little lakes over here. These, some of these people were called the Miami people. That's where we get the word Miami from. So we'll talk about that later. And so um, colonists from Spain came over and they settled over here, and they decided that they were going to make a home over here. And when they did, as it turns out, this place was fertile lands for cotton, cocoa beans, and chocolate beans. Anyone like chocolate here? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Some of the cultivation happened here, but that's a whole other separate story. And when the Spanish came here, they settled this as a territory, and then it wasn't until... In 1845, that's when it was incorporated into the Union as a state here in this country. So what is Florida up to nowadays? They're more known for their oranges, grapefruit, and a lot of citrus fruits. So 80% would have been grown here. So where does the name Florida come from? Well, it was named after an explorer by the name of Juan Ponce de Leon, who named it La Florida. And it was because he settled there on Easter, and the name of Easter in, um, in the Spanish language, Pascua Florida, which means flowering Easter. Get it? Florida, flowering. So in other words, the land of flowers here. So let's move on to the next slide. So what is Florida known for? Has anyone been to Miami? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. People would come here to Miami for vacations here South Beach over here. I think that's South Beach. Is it? Key West. Key West. Key West. That's a whole lot other place. <laughs> yeah, but Miami, that's where people go to uh, go for finance, commerce, culture, arts, music. It's basically their version of LA, I guess you can call it. And uh, the funny thing, like I said, Miami was, was named after the Miami people, the natives who lived there. So if you look, these buildings right here, these are apartments, believe it or not. These are apartments, these are business buildings, this is a hotel. That's what I just found out in researching this place. And yes, right down here somewhere, this is a resort. I kid you not. This huge building over here. So moving on to the next slide. Who wants to go to space? Yeah. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. This is the Kennedy Space Center, yep. okay. named after President Kennedy. And this place is where people go to get their, you know, space training and all that stuff. And yeah, I know, I know, you guys heard that Texas is where we launch our, uh, our satellites and our space shuttles. Yeah, yeah, but still, this is where the training happens. And yeah, this is another space shuttle that's being pointed up into space. Right. So let's move on from here. Sports fans, 
Recognize this? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Miami Dolphins. Yeah. They are one of the biggest sports teams in Florida. They're also one of the most lucrative. And yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm a in Florida. yeah, I wasn't so sure which logo to pick because, you know. But, you know, this is the Miami Dolphins. They may not be my team, but you know what? I know them. That's what matters. <laughs> Speaking of which, who plays basketball here? I do. Yeah, you do? Then do you I'm recognize these guys from Miami Heat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> Miami Heat is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, sports team in the field of basketball in Florida. So, anyone who is willing to watch another basketball game, you're going to watch the Miami Heat? I do, Jimmy. Yeah, you do? Okay. So, what else is Florida known for? Who wants to go to Disney? We have Disneyland here in California. They have Disney World. This is their Disney World castle. It was modeled after the other castle that we see in California. So in case you're wondering why they look the same, this is pretty much why. And as far as the castle's design is concerned, yeah, they had planned to build more in the inside, but they totally scrapped the plan when they decided to expand the land that was Disney World. So, yeah, anyone who wants to go in the castle, sorry, but you can still go to Disney World. <laughs> so, take me with you. Me <laughs> too. Oh, yeah, Carmen too. Oh, no, I don't walk home. You're going to walk home. No. You're going to make me walk home. Yeah. Yeah, girl. Oh, man. So, let's talk about oh, the Buccaneers. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More football fans, do you like the Buccaneers? Yeah. Well, someone's got spirit in here. You got to give them that. So, for those of you that don't know, Tampa Bay is on the other side. And let me show you people at home. So Tampa Bay would be right over here, just across from Orlando and miles away from from Miami, and Tampa Bay is right there because it's a bay. Get it? Yeah, what's going on? Tampa Bay right now. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. So, yeah, I can. My late brother Charles lived in Florida. He was an AB from 1999. Yeah. Nice. Have you been to Florida, Ken? What? Have you been to Florida? I've been to Florida. Well, let's see what Florida looks like when the whole thing is over. <laughs> so let's can conclude today's class. Oh, so, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. So, ladies and gentlemen, oh, Sunshine oh, State, yeah. oranges. Yeah. What else is Florida known for? I mean, yeah, Florida may be known as the Sunshine State, but it's a lot more than just sunshine. You can come to Florida for its arts, its culture, its commerce and finances, and you can go there for the scenic views. So despite the fact that it has some less than savory attributes like hurricanes, I'm not going to talk about that in, in full detail. But let's just talk about how Florida is known for many things but it's also known for a great atmosphere. I've never been to Florida, but if I had to choose, yeah, I would love to visit Miami one day. <laughs> yeah, you me. Yeah, so anyone who's interested, ask Carmen. She probably knows more than I do. No, or not. <laughs> Whoever's been to Florida in this room probably knows more than I do by experience. No, no, no. Yeah, so whoever wants to go to Disney World, there it is, Florida. <laughs> So, thank you guys for joining me for another geography lesson. I've been your host, Jeremy. Thanks again. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Everybody give me a hand. That was awesome. Thank you.
Let's have a conversation. Did you want me to read it? If you want me to, I could. I'm just saying. Some other time. Oh, God. You kill me, Bill. Okay, let's have a quick conversation. Grace is going to go read for us. So, what are we going to talk about? How about them Dodgers? No. <laughs> What about them Broncos? So, so what? What's going on with Tampa Bay? Oh, 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 yeah, I like to do that. Okay. Well, you know, Miss Grace is going to read, and you and I are going to have to get up here and do some some sports talk. Yeah. All right. Talk Agreed. How about sports? Yeah. All right. Sports talk with Matt and Shannon. Yes, no, indeed. You know, we're both. It's all you, Miss Grace. <laughs> Good job, Matt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Yes. Guys, oh, hey, no. who's up for a little bit more of the Stuart Little book? We're getting towards the end now. Oh, no, I'm out of breath, sorry. <laughs> Can't read with these on, heavens. So if you are new to the Stuart Little book, it's okay. Because we've been reading, he likes to have adventures, or sometimes they happen to him. And he has had an adventure and we stopped at the end of adventures so if you missed the other ones you could read the book yourself Stuart Little or you could look up some of the previous uh, videos where we've read from the book but mostly you know you could just have any one of them uh, come up and uh, talk about it without having to read the entire book so that's good news so Stuart Little is written by E.B. White. Now, I didn't know that, but when I found that out, I remembered that E.B. White is the author of Charlotte's Web. I did know that one, and that's another book a lot of people like, and the movie. And there's a Stuart Little movie, too, so maybe you're familiar with them that way. But Stuart is no ordinary mouse. It says on the back, they have a little precursor for you. He was born to a family of humans. He lives in New York City with his parents, his older brother, George, and Snowbell the cat. Though he's shy and thoughtful, he's also a true lover of adventure. His greatest adventure comes when his best friend, a beautiful little bird named Margolo, disappears from her nest. Determined to track her down, Stuart ventures away from home for the very first time in his life. He finds adventure aplenty, oh, and he has, but will he find his friend? So we haven't found her yet, just so you know. Uh, but we're still on the hunt. And chapter eight is Ames Crossing. Now here's a, here's Stuart. He's if you're unfamiliar so far, he's got a little car that a dentist made. Uh, it's a it's a miniature real car, so it runs. Uh, and so here his little car is coming up to a place, which I'm assuming is called Ames Crossing. In the loveliest town of all, where the houses were white and high, and the elm trees were green and higher than the houses, and my, Matt walked by making farting noises, where the front yards and bush, uh, where the backyards were bushy and worth finding about, because that's where a bird might be. The street sloped down to the stream, and the stream flowed quietly under the bridge. Sounds very pretty. Where the lawns ended in orchards, and the orchards ended in fields, and the fields ended in pastures, and the pastures climbed the hill and disappeared over the top toward the wonderful wide sky. In this loveliness of all towns, Stuart stopped to get a drink of sarsaparilla. Parking his car in front of the general store, he stepped out and the sun felt so good that he sat down on the porch for a few minutes to enjoy the feeling of being in a new place on a fine day. Mm, sounds like fun, huh? This was the most peaceful and beautiful spot he had found 
in all his troubles. It seemed to him a place he would gladly spend the rest of his life in. If it weren't for the night he got that night, he got homesick for the sights of New York and for his family, Mr. and Mrs. Frederick C. Little and George. And if it weren't for the fact that something deep inside him made him want to find Margolo. After a while, the storekeeper came out to smoke a cigarette and he joined Stuart on the front steps. He started to offer Stuart a cigarette, <coughs> but when he noticed how small he was, he changed his mind. Ah. So have you any sarsaparilla in your store? Asked Stuart. I've got a ruinous thirst. Certainly, said the storekeeper. Gallons of sarsaparilla. Root beer, birch beer, ginger ale, moxie, lemon soda, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Gypsy-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Popsi-Cola, and raspberry cream tonic. Anything you want. Let me have a bottle of sarsaparilla, please, said Stuart, and a paper cup. The, score, the storekeeper went back to the store and returned with the drink. He opened the bottle, poured some out into the cup, and set the cup down on the step below Stuart, who whipped off his cap, just like Matt does all the time, lay down on his stomach, and sipped up some of the cool, refreshing drip, drink using his cap as a dipper. So here he is, oops, dipping into the little cup of sarsaparilla. So that sounds like fun. I was wondering how he was going to have that. I don't think he could carry the bottle around very much. That's very refreshing, remarked Stuart. There's nothing like a long, cool drink in the heat of day when you're traveling. Are you going far? asked the storekeeper. Perhaps very far, replied Stuart. I'm looking for a bird named Margolo. You haven't sighted her here, have you? Well, I can't say I have, said the storekeeper. What does she look like? Perfectly beautiful, replied Stuart, wiping the sarsaparilla off his lips with the corner of his sleeve. <laughs> She's a remarkable bird. Anybody would notice her. She comes from a place where there are thistles. Oh, the storekeeper looked at Stuart closely. How tall are you, he asked. You mean in my stocking feet, said Stuart? Yeah. Two inches, nothing, and a quarter, answered Stuart. I haven't been measured recently, however. I may have shot up a bit. It's in two inches and a quarter for you guys. It's about this big. Hmm. Uh, you know, said the storekeeper thoughtfully, there's somebody in this town you really ought to meet. Who is that? asked Stuart, yawning. Harriet Ames, said the storekeeper. She's just your size, maybe a trifle shorter, if anything. Oh, a Stuart sized person. In the morning, this. Oh, did I skip a page here? Let's just double check that. Actually, I did. <laughs> That's a whole book. It's the first time I've done that, huh? What's she like, asked Stuart? Fair, fat, and 40? No, Harriet is young and she is quite pretty. She is considered one of the best dressed girls in town, too. All her clothes are tailored specifically for her. Well, they'd kind of have to be, wouldn't they? That's so, remarked Stuart. Yes, Harriet's quite a girl. Her people, the Ameses, are rather prominent in this town. One of her ancestors used to be the ferryman in revolutionary days. He would carry anybody across the stream. He didn't care whether they were British soldiers or American soldiers, as long as they paid their fare. I guess he did pretty well. Anyway, the Ameses have always had plenty of money. They live in a big house with a lot of servants. I know Harriet would be very much interested to meet you. Well, that's very kind of you, Stuart replied. But I'm not much of a society man these days. Too much on the move. I never stay anywhere very long anywhere, so... I blow into a town and I blow right out again. Here today, gone tomorrow. A will of the wisp. The highways and byways are where you'll find me, always looking for Margolo. Sometimes I feel that I'm quite near to her and that she's just around the turn in the road. Other times I feel that I will never find her and will never hear her voice again, which reminds me it's time I'm on my way. Stuart paid for his drink, said goodbye to the storekeeper, and drove off. But Ames's Crossing seemed like the finest town he had ever known, 
And before he reached the end of the main street, he swerved a sharp left. Knocks over the camera. Oh, no, it's not an earthquake. It's just Grace kicking the camera cart. <sighs> and turned onto a dirt road and drove down to a quiet spot on the bank of the river. That afternoon, he swam and lay on his back in the mossy bank, his hands crossed under his head, his thoughts returning to the conversation he had with the storekeeper. Harriet Ames, he murmured. So here is Stuart. He's very small in this picture. Right down here in the front, he's kind of camped out by the riverside after he has had a little swim. He's out there in the sun having a nice day. Evening came, and Stuart still lingered by the stream. He ate a light supper of a cheese sandwich and a drink of water and slept that night in the warm grass with the sound of the stream in his ears. That place just sounds so good, right? That is insane, man. I know that these pages are stuck together. Now, you, ta-da! In the morning, the sun rose warm and bright, and Stuart slipped into the river again for an early dip. After breakfast, he left his, he got into his car and uh, hid it under a skunk cabbage leaf and walked up to the post office. While he was filling his fountain pen from the public inkwell, he happened to glance towards the door and what he saw startled him so that he almost lost his balance and fell into the ink. So this is him by the inkwell, see? He's like peering around it. Ooh, ooh, what's that over there? A girl about two inches high had entered and was crossing the floor toward the mailboxes. She wore sports clothes and with, had her head held high. In her hair was a stamen from a flower. Stuart began to tremble with excitement. Here she comes. She's as small as Stuart. Uh, what to do? Must be the Ames girl. You, you think it's only too many people in the town that are two inches tall, right? Must be the Ames girl, he said to himself, and he kept out of sight behind the inkwell as he watched her open her mailbox, which was about a quarter of an inch wide, and pull out her letters. Now, who is sending tiny letters to tiny people? The storekeeper had told the truth. Harry was pretty. And, of course, she was the only girl Stuart had ever encountered who wasn't miles and miles taller than he was. Stuart figured that if the two of them were to walk along together, her head would come a little higher than his shoulder. The idea filled him with interest. He wanted to slide down to the floor and speak to her, but he didn't dare. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, in case you guys are wondering what's going on, everyone is getting ready for lunch here. I hope you'll be having lunch after we're done, too. All his boldness had left him behind, and he stayed hidden behind the inkwell until Harriet had gone. When he was sure that he was out of sight, he stole out of the post office and slunk down the street to the store, half hoping that he would meet the beautiful little girl, half fearing that he would. Have you any engraved stationery? asked the storekeeper. I'm behind, he asked the storekeeper. I'm behind in my correspondence. The storekeeper helped Stuart up onto the counter and found some paper, letter paper for him. Small paper, marked with the initial L. Stuart, you know, that's good because his last name is Little. Stuart Little, so now he's got an L. Not, not this kind of an L. So uh, Stuart whipped out his fountain pen and sat down against a five-cent candy bar and began a letter to Harriet. So here he is on, up against the candy bar thinking, what shall I write to this lovely young Harriet? My dear Miss Ames, he wrote, I am a young person of modest proportions. By birth, I'm a New Yorker, but at the moment, I'm traveling on business of a confidential nature. Yeah, not good to let a girl that you want to meet know that you're chasing down another girl, huh? My travels have brought me to your village. Yesterday, the keeper of your local store, who has an honest face and an open yes. manner, gave me a most favorable report of your character and appearance. At this point of the letter, <laughs> Stuart's oh, pen ran dry from the long words, and Stuart had to, had to get the storekeeper to lower him head first into a bottle of ink so that he could refill the pen. So here he is, his head down inside the bottle of ink, holding his pen down in there and getting a little ink. 
And I do mean a little ink, right? At this, oh, sorry, I pressed that one. Then he went back to letter writing. Pray forgive me, Miss Ames, continued Stuart, for presuming to strike, a, strike up an acquaintance on so slender an excuse as your physical similarity. But of course, the fact is, as you yourself must know, there are very few people who are only two inches in height. <laughs> I say two inches. Actually, I am somewhat taller than that. My only drawback is that I look somewhat, I look something like a mouse. Do you think he does look like a mouse? I am nicely proportioned, however, am also muscular beyond my years. Let me be perfectly blunt. My purpose in writing this brief note is to suggest that we meet. I realize that your parents may object to the suddenness and directness of my proposal, as well as to my somewhat mouse-like appearance. So I think probably it might be a good idea if you just didn't mention the matter to them. Okay, that's a stranger danger right there. Somebody writes you and says, I want to meet you, but don't tell your parents about it. <clears throat> do not do that. Thank you. What they don't know won't hurt them. However, you probably understand more about dealing with your father and mother than I do. So I won't attempt to instruct you, but will leave everything to your good judgment. Being an outdoors person, I am camped by the river in an attractive spot at the foot of Tracy's Lane. Mm -hmm. Would you care to code for a paddle with me in my canoe? What canoe? It must be this canoe. I've heard no previous mention of a canoe. Oh, you know what? We're almost out of time, and I'm going to have to leave you guys hanging. He's going to uh, finish up here. He's saying, Stuart forgot in the excitement of riding Harriet that he did not own a canoe. Oops. If you wish to accept my invitation, be at the river tomorrow about 5 o'clock. I shall await your arrival with all the eagerness I can muster. And now I must close this offensive letter and catch up with my affairs. Yours very truly, Stuart Little. Now, this is the first time we are not finishing an adventure and there's not even much left of the book. So you're going to have to wait to see. Is she going to meet him? It looks by the cover that he might come up with a canoe. However, he's the only one in it. So you're just going to have to wonder until I can finish the book for you. And I will happily do so as soon as we have some more free time on the live stream. So keep your eyes open for it. And don't forget, we need to hire some people here at Elwyn. We'd love to find some really wonderful ones. So that would be your friends, right? Let them know and just have them uh, give us a call and we'll help them out. Thank you. Have a fabulous day. Thank you. Oh, now I can see. Thank you.